It's a pleasure to um, introduce Jia Yu, who's an intern here and also um, in his final year PhD at um, Arizona State University. Um, he's going to describe an indexing mechanism that he worked on um, with some folks at, um, at IBM. You can see the title here about, about Hermit, and it, um, a succinct um, secondary indexing mechanism that exploits column correlations. So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Jia. And uh, so today I will present our SIGMOD 2019 paper about, uh, about the Hermit designing succinct secondary indexing mechanism by exploiting column correlations. Uh, this was my uh, intern work last, last summer with researchers at IBM L. Maiden. So before diving into the details of our Hermit design, so first let's review what an index structure is. So an index is a copy of selected column or data in a table. So given such a table, it has a primary key. So pretty much you want to build a, a primary index on the primary key, right? And then based on the current workload, you may, you, you may want to build a secondary index on the, on some, on the frequently accessed uh, column. And uh, also, you may want to have you may want to build several secondary indexes on different columns in order to speed up speed up your queries. So, building all these kind of secondary indexes, so definitely they will help you to accelerate your query processing because you can you don't have to scan the entire table to to find the qualified tuples. However, the key problem of having so many secondary indexes is that they consume so so much memory and so much disk. We may soon. Uh, run out of our memory or disk. So, so indexes consume lots of space. Based on recent uh, recent paper published in VLDB 2016, it shows that so a sec building a secondary B tree index on TPSH, TPSH table can consume around 13% additional storage overhead. Remember that this is just for one single secondary index. You may have several secondary index on the same table. And this benchmark test up to 200 GB TPSH line item table. So for sure, there are several existing approaches that can help you to reduce index size. So the first one, for sure, you can use some sparse index or compressed index to reduce storage overhead at the expense of lookup performance. The problem is that so all these kind of uh, compressed index or sparse index, they can reduce storage overhead, but they cannot guarantee good lookup performance in all scenarios. For instance, in, in my previous work, sp uh, a sparse index called the HIPPO index, it proposed, we proposed that, so instead of indexing all, uh, instead in, in indexing all individual keys, we actually, so only store synopsis for a range of disk pages. And it turns out that, so this kind of sparse index, they can pretty much, much smaller than B-tree. For instance, this one can, is around uh, 50 times smaller than B-tree, but it can only be comparable in terms of query performance to B plus tree at 0.1% selectivity. So another solution is that you, you, may, uh, you may figure out uh, indexing index selection, selection algorithm, which can help you to identify the frequently accessed uh, columns, and you just, you just build the index, secondary indexes on those columns. So this algorithm can help you avoid building so many secondary indexes, but it suffer, suffer the performance drop when you access the, the unindexed columns. So here is the objective of, of our Hermit index. So we want to design such an index structure that can consume much less space, but still achieve good enough query performance. So the key observation that is, uh, inspired our hermit is that, so actually column correlations are prevalent. Now let's consider such a table that store uh, all the historical stock data. Uh, in, in this table, if you look at the figure here, so we have at least three columns. So the first column is the date, and the second one is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and the third column is the Standard and Poor Index. So in this, in this example, now let's look at this query pattern. So we, we may notice a query pattern from the query workload that frequently access the, uh, the date and the Dow Jones, uh, Dow Jones columns. 
So for sure, you, will want, you may want to build a secondary index on these two columns to speed up the query processing. However, over the time, you may notice another query pattern that also acts as another column, which is the standard and poor uh, index here, this is the third column here. So, so the straightforward solution is that, so you, you go ahead and build another secondary index on the SNP column. And uh, yeah, this is, this is good for, not, for sure. However, building such a complete secondary index just on this, uh, on this SNP column can consume lots of, lots of disk space or memory space. So for sh in, at this moment, so we want to ask a, uh, ask a question that, so can we design such a, a mechanism to avoid build such a complete secondary index? So the answer is yes. So the idea of Hermit is that, so given the example we mentioned before, so we notice the, the actually the column Dow Jones and the column S&P, they are correlated. So if you look at the chart here, actually, actually all these two indexes, they are, they are highly correlated over the past several decades. And you, if you look at the chart right there, this, is, this one uh, describes the correlation directly uh, between the Dow Jones and S&P. So you may notice actually the correlation is pretty much a linear correlation between these two, uh, two columns. So here, our idea is that probably we can figure out a way to model the correlation between Dow Jones and S&P to reduce the index size. So back to our original query example. So the query, query pattern one and query pattern two. So instead of building a new secondary index for date and the uh, SNP column, so what we want to do is that, so we may, instead, we may instead build a succinct index structure just on the SNP column, which can model the correlation. So once the query on column SNP comes in, so this succinct index structure will, direct the, will, will not directly tell you where the actual tuple location is. Instead, it will output a value range on Dow Jones column. And then with this column range, it, we will have, since we know we have another existing secondary index on column, on column Dow Jones and the date. So given this output column range, we can turn back to the existing index and directly fetch the qualified tuples using the existing secondary index. So we call this entire access method hermit. And the succinct index structure we put on the column SNP, we call it TRS tree. So also please note that this, uh, this access method is approximate. So which means we need to perform some tuple refinement uh, later on to reduce uh, to remove some false positives. So I will talk this one later in this talk. So now let's look at the design of TIS tree in Hermit. So as we mentioned before, actually, so TIS tree is the kernel, the core concept of, of our Hermit index. So it stands for the tiered regression search tree. So this this tree will play an important role to rerouting the query. So this TRS tree has several nice features. So the first one is that it is a succinct machine learning enhanced tree structure index. And then it can capture correlation. Also, it can handle outliers inside the correlations. Third, it can adaptively and dynamically construct and reorganize internal tree structures. So just like the traditional tree structure, the internal node of TRS tree is, is, a, is a carry uh, tree structure. So in the internal node of TRS tree, it will partition the key space of each node into k, into k equal pieces. However, the difference of TRS tree is that, so instead of storing any actual tuple location, tuple pointers inside this tree structure, in, inside the leaf node, so the leaf node of TRS tree only maintain a set of parameters which memorize the correlation function inside this leaf node. Also, it will maintain a small outlier buffer like this one. 
So actually, so the correlation function, so this one is just a simple linear function calculated from the uh, linear regression method. So now, let's see how we can construct this TRS tree to model the correlation. So let's assume we have such a table like this one. So this table have uh, two columns, M and N, they are highly correlated. And also we have existing secondary index on column, N, uh, column M. So now we will show how, to t how TRS3 can model the correlation. So for now, you can just think TRS3 as a mapping from a column N to column M, which column M already has an existing secondary index. So given a value range, Given a value range on, uh, on n, TRS tree will return a value range on m, which is y-axis. So we will first discuss, discuss a very naive example, where uh, column m and n has uh, have a perfect linear correlation. So in this case, so TRS tree can just go ahead and run a, a linear regression on the entire data set, and uh, then it will get a linear function like this one. So once we obtain this function, TRS3 will validate each pair in column M and N to see whether this linear function can ca well capture uh, all the points, all the, all the M and N pairs. And uh, since in this case, uh, column M and N, they have a perfect linear, linear correlation. So the, the construction of the TRS3 will, uh, will just simply, and simply terminate. And uh, this tree structure will just contain a single node which can model the entire correlation. However, in reality, this case rarely happens. So it, it is highly possible that we may notice there are some differences between the model predict value and the true values. So in this case, we need to cover the differences. So in this case, TRS3 introduced a new parameter called epsilon here. So this epsilon is, uh, will set a bound on the differences. So here we will, so the epsilon actually in TRS3 is a user-defined parameter. So here I will now discuss how we compute this epsilon from the user-defined parameter. Uh, so given this set of parameters, all these kind of parameters, so the linear function here is now good enough to capture all the, all the differences inside this linear function. And then the construction algorithm of TRS3 will stop and it will just have a single, single node and uh, capture, the all the, capture the entire correlation. Okay, so now this solution is good. They can capture lots of, lots of differences. However, in reality, this is still not good enough to cover this, all the real world applications. Because in real world applications, there are some outliers and uh, they, may far from the, they may far from the linear function, like these three. Okay, so we need to consider all these outliers in order to make sure we can, our TIS tree, our Hermit index structure, they can guarantee the query accuracy. So to solve this problem, we use a, we use a, a outlier buffer here to cover all the outliers. So in this case, we have one, two, and three, three outliers. We will directly put these three outliers into this uh, outlier buffer with this linear function. So for now, we just discussed a very naive correlation, which is a linear correlation. So and in this case, we can just use a single tree node, the root node, to cover the, the entire space. But what if the, uh, the correlation is nonlinear? It's very, it's probably it is very complex. So in this case, so in this case, we can hardly just find a single function to cover the entire space, entire correlation. So if we run the linear regression we mentioned before, and we may figure out after a while, our outlier buffer, it, may, it might, might be for our, for our interest. It is not efficient anymore. Excuse me. Do you increase the epsilon value? <coughs> yeah, but in that case, the epsilon will be super large. Uh, so it, it affect, uh, affect. So if, if the epsilon is large enough, it will cover, uh, if we go to, so I didn't, I didn't have a figure. So if the epsilon is large enough, it will cover the entire space. Then you will have no miss, no, no miss, right? No misses, right? In that case. But the thing is, when we test our uh, structure on real world data, actually, actually outliers, 
are very common and they are very far from the from the uh, from the regression line. So you cannot just use a single epsilon to cover the entire space. Yeah. Okay. But then it's bad, right? Yeah, that in that case it is that is that is bad. So but we can use the outlier buffer to only memorize those those rear outliers. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if the epsilon is large, right? You have to like uh, given a n value, right? You want to you, you will map a lot of m values, right? Yes. Then, I mean, the, uh, you have to, like, uh, uh, this is not, like, like Yeah, yeah. So we also have an assumption that, so when we build the, our TS3 or Hermit uh, index mechanism on those two columns, they should be correlated. We will first detect whether they are correlated. If they are not correlated, we definitely cannot handle that. So this is, this is our assumption. Okay. So, so let's move on. So in this case, our tree node, our TR3, the root node, the root node, our TR3, we will just go ahead and split. And uh, so the splitting strategy is pretty uh, straightforward. It will evenly, it will evenly partition the k range of the entire space into k pieces, where k is the found. And in this example, so actually the, the found of this uh, TR3 node is is two. So afterwards, we run linear regression linear regression on both ranges, and still validate whether the generated linear function can well capture the, the interest. Okay, can well capture the interest. Okay. Can well capture the interest. And uh, this mechanism will continue. Uh, it will keep splitting some tree nodes until all the generated linear function linear regression function can well capture the correlation in this range. So now, with this TRS tree, we are now ready to explain how we can use this TRS tree to answer the lookup queries. So now, given TRS tree on column N, so TRS tree, this TRS tree is a mapping from column N to, to an existing, col existing secondary index on column, column M. Remember that column M and N is, co uh, is correlated. So, Given input range on column N, TS3 should generate a value range on column M. And then we can, we can use this column range, uh, column range on M to fetch the correct, uh, correct tuples using the existing secondary index on M. However, remember that so TS3 always return an approximate range on column M, which means so if we use the return column range here to, uh, to query this secondary index, it will contain some uh, false positives, false positives, but no false negatives. So in this case, uh, Hermit will introduce another phase called the refinement phase. So it will filter out all the false positives by checking the base table, to, and then it will remove the unqualified tuples. In this case, we can guarantee the accuracy. So a major difference between Hermit and other machine learning based index structure is that it, 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 is that it also can, ca uh, can handle the insertion. So once the insertion operation comes in, the TRS tree in Hermit will then route this query to a corresponding leaf node, like this one. And once this, once this insertion goes to the leaf node, we may confront two cases. So the so first case is that the newly, inserted, the newly inserted entry pair, it can be fully covered by the existing linear regression model here. So in this case, we can purely do nothing and terminate the insertion. So in the second case, in the second case, this inserted entry pair, it, fall be, it falls beyond this, this linear function. So in this case, we will identify this tuple as an outlier and put it into the outlier buffer here. Also, Hermit will, per, uh, will perform online maintenance to re-optimize its, uh, its internal structure in order to handle the data distribution change and, uh, and also the splitting. So in our example, our insertion example mentioned before, so if we find that an outlier bucket, outlier bucket of a certain leaf node, it, it, if it contains lots, uh, lots of entries, we may then mark this, this, uh, this buffer outlier as, as a full, and then we will uh, append the address of this node into a queue. Hermit will then use a background thread to do the splitting, uh, to do the train node splitting periodically. Now let's look at the evaluation of Hermit. 
so in our paper, we actually test three different data sets. So first one is the stock data set, which we mentioned before. The second one is the sensor data set. The third one is the synthetic data set. So due to the time limit, I will just uh, only focus on the synthetic benchmark for now and also discuss its in memory performance. So in this example, in this synthetic, synthetic benchmark, we actually have a table with three columns. So the first one is the key column, the second one is M and N columns. So column M and N, they are highly correlated. So in the first case, it, uh, these two columns have a linear correlation. And in the second case, this, this uh, column M and N, they have a sigmoid correlation. So we also we have built an, already built a B-tree secondary index on column M here. So now, for now, then we will have two options. So the first option is that then we will go ahead and build another secondary, secondary B tree index on column column N here, and uh, or you can build a Hermit TS tree, which is very tiny structure on column N. So now let's look at the range range lookup performance. This is range lookup throughput actually. So the left hand side is based uh, is in the linear function. Uh, linear correlation. The right hand side is the sigmoid uh, correlation. So if you look at the figure, uh, look at those those figures, you will see that actually, so B plus three will achieve uh, better performance because it does not have any resulting phase. However, Hermit is also pretty good. Actually, so if you look at all these figures, Hermit will only uh, suffer around ten percent performance drop. Now look, let's look at the uh, memory. A consumption of Hermit and B-tree. So in the left-hand side case, in this one, actually, so the, uh, the the memory consumption of Hermit is negligible because just because Hermit can just use a single node to capture the entire linear perfect linear function. And uh, if you look at this case, which is the sigmoid correlation between column M and N, so you will notice although Hermit spends a little bit more space to uh, to model this correlation. But it is still around 100 times smaller, smaller than B plus three. So now here is our conclusion. So Hermit is a, a succinct secondary index indexing mechanism. So it uses a machine learning enhanced tree structure to to model the correlation between columns. Also, it can capture outliers. Yeah. So uh, does the performance of Hermit also depends on the order of split because? What happens when the first split itself is too bad? You, you mean, probably, sorry, I didn't get you. So, say your first split, first node split that you did was based on the, uh, I mean, uh, maybe too bad, right? And then after that, you might just end up creating more and more splits. Maybe there was a better, uh, uh, smaller number of splits than, than what they're doing here, right? So you're saying the, uh, the node splitting, splitting part? Yeah. So you, you you are saying so after after uh, some insertion the the function may may not be uh, accurate may not be efficient. Right, right. Because uh, I'm assuming you split the same node, right? You don't look at the other nodes while splitting. No, I don't, because so other key ranges because this is so when we do the node splitting, we do the uh, we evenly partition space. So which means all the key ranges have no over overlaps. We don't have to check other nodes. So after so. Yeah, that that might be possible after some in, after a bunch of insertions, some tree nodes may get split, and uh, because all the function, the all the linear model function cannot capture uh, the new distribution, so it has to split. Do you ever merge? So we do have merge, but when we do merge, we only like when we, when we do we just do delete. We'll do the uh, we'll merge the, the, the adjacent tree nodes, which is which in, when we right. If you have two segments that. Are basically the same linear function. Yeah, yeah, it and, will, it will merge. And so that would be the reason I, I bring that up is I can imagine that could result because of, you just had an unlucky sequence of splits, and so you ended yeah. up with all these little pieces that really yes. should be merged. Yes, we do merge. So the the uh, the trigger the threshold that can trigger our our merge is that so if the outlier buffer of uh, of both uh, both tree node are pretty pre, uh, are totally empty. So it will trigger a merge. Uh, two questions, actually. So one, can you bound uh, how, how bad a split is? Because it sounds like if you have an outlier coming in and your outlier bucket is already full, 
I will keep partitioning both sides of the thing if, uh, if like, the outlier is bad enough. Like, is there, I, I think there must be a bound on, on how many splits you, you can do? Uh, yes, we actually have a bound. We actually have a bound. So, uh, so we actually, we, with the bound is that so we we actually bound the the total like the the, the overall depth of that tree. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I guess no offense on last question, but it's the machine learning part just the linear regression. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So actually, so yeah, that's a good question. So the reason why we are just using that very simple linear regression is that so all other machine learning models some. Uh, so you can you can for sure you can replace that linear linear function with some com complex models, but in that case the the construction time will be so so slow, okay. and also for insertion it will also be slow. Yeah. So in the beginning of your slides, like you mentioned the TEPC benchmark, right? Yes. Did you try your method on the TEPC? Uh, no, we didn't try because there is no correlation. No use for correlation because it is uh, just a synthetic one. That there's it is distribution is totally uniform. Yeah. What are the implications of uh, your TRS tree not being balanced? Yeah, that's a good question. So in the, if there is a case the TRS tree is is not balanced, so that probably there is if the probably it will affect the performance if the tree is very unbalanced. So you didn't really push on that uh, aspect in the evaluation? Uh, no. So in a static database where I have some um, idea where the correlations are, I can see how to apply this. But take a dynamic situation where a priori I have no I, I I believe based on the query workload I really ought to have indexes on these two columns. How over time do I recognize that Oh gee, this is stupid. I really should be using a hermit index on one of them because they're actually highly correlated. Uh, yeah, this this is actually a very good question. Also proposed by our reviewers. So they ask, <laughs> they ask, how can you uh, like detect all the column correlations, all the, all the column correlations uh, inside this table, right? If there are several lots of columns. So there are some existing research work. Research work uh, in this in our community to de to identify all the possible function, uh, soft functional uh, dependencies among columns. This is this is one solution. There are also lots of awesome solutions. So another another thing is that you can use, so you can you, can, there are some. It's basically, this data classic data mining problem of finding functional dependencies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is an old problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are lots of existing works in that part. So, or if you want to avoid that, that kind of uh, that kind of trouble, so you can just use some uh, some very simple function, some, some very simple mathematical function to compute whether these two columns have uh, like have some simple correlation, like whether they are, uh, their values are whether they are monotonic increasing somehow. So, so one of the advantages of Fermat seems to be that uh, the secondary index uh, storage used for secondary index is, is quite small, right? Yes. Um, and you're relying on the fact that the two columns are correlated. So, if I already know that the two columns are correlated, can we can I not actually compress them in a way, uh, and that would actually result in a lot more save, space savings because the data is much much bigger than whatever the secondary index. Uh, yes, yes, that yes, that could be a method to to reduce space. Uh, yes, that is actually a good question. Mm, we didn't think about that to compress the correlated columns. Mm, probably that can reduce space, but I'm not sure whether. Mm, you can still uh, you can still build an index on the compressed columns. Yes. But the point is that data is much larger than your secondary index. So if you can use a correlation to compress the base data, then that would result in a lot more savings. Yes, yes, that, uh, that is a very good uh, proposal, I think. Yeah. But uh, I think the update performance is influenced much less by building a Hermit index than versus if you compress the Sure, so there's, right? a, there's a trade off there. Yeah. There's a trade off. If it is like an analytical, I mean, show that UPCH example, if it is an analytical database, then why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Great. Any questions?
Are you done? Yeah, yeah I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. So. Great. Yeah, thank you.